In part three of our series on technologies that enable immunotherapies, we will examine a novel class of living drugs called CAR T-cells. A chimeric antigen receptor T-cell, also known as a CAR T-cell, is a novel class of immunotherapy that involves genetically manipulating immune cells derived from a patient to better recognize tumor antigens. This cell-based gene therapy has become the standard of care for some hematological malignancies, including pediatric acute lymphoblastic leukemia and for certain types of non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. The first CAR T-cell therapy was approved by the FDA in 2017, and to date, only one additional CAR T construct has cleared this regulatory hurdle. Both of these approved therapies target CD19, a surface antigen found on B cells. CAR T cells have actually existed since the late 1980s, but over the years their design has become more complex and more effective as our knowledge of how the immune system functions has expanded. In fact, there have been four generations of CAR T cells. The first generation consisted of a single chain variable fragment attached to an intracellular signaling domain. The CD3 Zeta intracellular signaling domain was used, but there were no co-stimulatory domains included. So these cells had limited capabilities as far as expansion and cytotoxicity were concerned. The next generation of CAR constructs addressed this limitation and added the intracellular co-stimulatory domain 41BB or CD28. These constructs are the basis for the FDA-approved therapies currently available. The third generation of CARs combine multiple co-stimulatory domains such as CD28, OX40 or CD29, 41BB to augment T-cell activity. The fourth generation of CAR constructs, sometimes referred to as next generation constructs, consists of similar co-stimulatory domains to the previous generation, but adds factors that help the cell propagate, such as interleukins, cytokines, or other co-stimulatory ligands. This generation of CAR constructs is still being investigated in preclinical studies, but the hope is that they will result in better effector functionality and have an improved persistence in the patient. But while these constructs are improving the potential efficacy of CAR T-cell therapy, there are still technical challenges involved with getting them produced and into patients in a timely manner. Utilizing immune cells for treatment is not a pill. It's not a pill that you just give or injection that you give and, you know, it's not off-the-shelf drug. It's, it's basically a personalized medicine type of uh, approach. There are technological limitations to this, especially the CAR T cells technology as an entirely new treatment modality, which is cellular therapy. So you have to produce a personalized medicine, which is a cellular therapy. The other thing is the vein to vein time, which means the process takes long from taking cells from the patient, manufacturing CAR T cells in a central manufacturing facility, and bring the T cells back to the patient for infusion is typically something between three and four weeks. These B cell malignancies are sometimes rapidly progressing, so patients die before they get the treatment. Fortunately, there have been technological developments designed to speed the process of creating CAR T cells and getting them to patients quickly. In this piece, we will look at the workflow for creating these therapies and identify areas that are being streamlined to optimize this new class of therapies. The creation of a CAR T construct starts with the isolation of T cells. These T cells are then expanded ex vivo and engineered to express a tumor specific receptor, usually using a retroviral vector. The newly modified cells are then injected back into the patient who is monitored over time to determine persistence and efficacy. The process of isolating the cells to be used for CAR T therapy depends upon the intended use of the final product. It is now possible to purchase purified immune cell subsets to work with. There are a number of suppliers out there that are seeing a surge in interest due to these new therapies. The other big change has been in the cell therapy space 
So adoptive T cell therapy and CAR T, which has primarily been used in hematological cancers, but I think as a, as a technique, that's something that we've seen really emerge. And our clients are now working in that sort of space and coming to us for help and support with resources for that, be that the ability to supply very large numbers of PBMCs through provision of fresh leukopaks for process development for people that develop CAR T cell protocols, but also in advice, looking at constructs for things like safety testing on what sorts of models are going to be required for the safety testing of some of these cellular therapies going forward. But for clinical applications, the purified cells generally come from the patient or an allogeneic donor. In these cases, after the blood is taken and separated, magnetic beads containing antibodies to T-cell surface markers are mixed with the peripheral blood mononuclear cells or PBMCs. The antibody bead conjugates bind the T-cells, which are then isolated and ready for activation and expansion. T-cell activation generally requires a cell medium containing IL-2 and antibodies to CD3. Once the cells have expanded, they are ready to be transduced with an appropriate vector. This is usually done using retroviral vectors, the production and testing of which can take some time. The virus production itself is a big enterprise. It may take many months to manufacture a clinical grade batch, if you will, of virus. So that's uh, in between four to nine months, depending on the complexity of the virus. Because you have to understand that we need to do a lot of testing, testings for lot release of the virus batch. They have to be clean, without any contaminant, no virus, no nothing completely safe to, to be utilized in clinical trials. Actually, the testing is uh, actually what takes uh, longer. The manufacture of the virus itself can take between two to four weeks, so it's, 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 it's quite fast. Recently, there have been CAR-T constructs created using the CRISPR-Cas9 system instead of a retroviral vector. While this is an active and exciting area of research, it is still too early to tell how successful this method will be in the long term. Once the cells have been transduced and tested, they are ready to be reinfused into the patient. The protocol for this varies across clinical centers and even from patient to patient, but they generally require that the patient undergoes lymphodepletion via chemotherapy before being reinfused with the CAR T cells. This is to decrease the competition between the CAR T cells and normal cells for interleukins and other factors within the body. After the CAR T cells have been reinfused, the patient is then closely monitored for adverse side effects, as well as CAR T cell persistence and the impact the therapy is having on the cancer. Monitoring the patient is critical, as CAR T cell therapy can have a number of potentially dangerous side effects, including cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. The monitoring process involves traditional techniques such as peripheral blood smears, as well as newer ones such as flow cytometry. But as with most new therapies, new monitoring solutions are also coming online. Uh, of course, you um, look for CAR T cell persistence, just taking blood and look for the CAR T cells uh, and emulate them. You can use standard imaging technologies to look for the tumor. PET scan or something, but for sure we need more sophisticated technologies to really understand what's going on there. You can take liquid biopsies, you look for circulating tumor cells or circulating cell-free DNA from the tumor, which you can analyze. These samples you can also use to do mutation analysis, so to see how the mutational landscape of the tumor has changed, not just for CAR T cells. You can also take fine needle biopsies from the tumor, let's say a lymphoma from an affected lymph node, and analyze these. We offer nowadays ultra high content imaging technology. A study done by Sugita and uh, Monica Guzman's lab at, at Cornell. A CAR T cell they made, they introduced at various doses into the mice, and they were asking two questions. Using digital PCR, they were measuring the persistence of the CAR T cells that they put in up to, I think, almost 300 days. 
as well as the tumor, which had an NPM1 marker as an SNV that they could use, or multiple SNVs they could use to basically track tumor volume, essentially. And so they had some beautiful curves showing how different doses gave greater, lesser persistence of the CAR T cells, and also were you impacting favorably on, on reduction of the tumor volume. So it was a really nice example of being able to both follow the reagent, in this case a CAR T cell, whether it's still in the, in the system and whether the tumor was being knocked down by it. Although CAR T cell therapies represent an exciting advance for cell-based gene therapies, they still face many challenges. Some are biological, like tumor antigen escape, accessing solid tumors, or overcoming a suppressive tumor microenvironment. And some are technical, such as identifying appropriate targets and the time required to create these personalized medicines. Identifying new, more specific targets is an active area of study less uh, non-specific uh, binding towards you know, antigens or peptides that are um, not related to, to the target. We are utilizing now a very quick discovery platform, which is basically a tandem PCR type of platform. We can get samples, blood, tumor samples, get the T-cells out from there. And in um, tandem PCR, we, we have design primers to identify those TCRs, utilize RNA extracted from, from those cells. By this process, at the end, get cDNA that can be put into a vector uh, right away. And you can do that in 48 hours. Another area in immuno-oncology where we think we're going to be able to help out with this technology is in the development of novel CAR T cells. When uh, CAR T constructs are put together and ultimately make it into patients, some of them are highly efficacious, others less efficacious, some have high toxicity, others don't. And you'd obviously like to figure that out before going into a clinical trial and putting them into patients. And there aren't good tools for doing that right now. We recently published a paper in which we used this untargeted proteomic profiling to look broadly at what phosphosignaling happens downstream of a CAR T receptor and what differs between ones that have desirable properties and others that don't. And that's now allowed us to identify potential biomarkers that we are now converting into these higher throughput, more quantitative immuno-MRM targeted assays in the hope is that we'll be able to use those in the preclinical space to characterize different CAR T constructs and be able to predict which ones might work better when they make it into patients. And with the selection of targets, improving the need for getting those targets into the appropriate CAR constructs in a timely manner becomes more important. The vein-to-vein -vein time for these therapies is particularly critical for patients with advanced cancers, where even a matter of days can make a big difference. One issue facing physicians is how to get the patient T-cells isolated and shipped to a facility that can generate a CAR T-cell. Let's say if you have a central manufacturing facility, now let's say the, the three to four weeks, um, most of the time is actually not the actual manufacturing process. So the actual manufacturing process is I think something like 14 days. But you have to take the sample, the leukapheresis from the patient, freeze it, ship it, thaw it, manufacture CAR T cells, freeze them, ship them back, infuse them. And cells don't like to travel and they don't like to be frozen and thawed. On the one hand, we are developing CAR T cell manufacturing procedures which are a little bit shorter. Yeah, so it's not 14 days, it's rather 8 to 12 days. Um, on the other hand, we try to get rid of the additional time which is spent on shipping the stuff and freezing and thawing. So we pursued studies with uh, fresh CAR T cells and this of course works only if you do local manufacturing so close to the point of care. So either directly in the hospital, people have done that in clinical trials, uh, not even in a clean room, or in local regional hubs, so a cell factory, which produces in a lo local way the CAR T cells. In fact, we have at Milton Biotech a cell factory where we produce uh, CAR T cells for studies in Germany. So there, within a day, 24 hours, you can easily uh, ship the CAR T cells for infusion to the patient. So the all, overall time requirement is then something like, uh, I guess, 
10 to 14 days. I just want to emphasize how fortunate we are here. I mean, as a researcher, as a scientist, and the way that the leadership is putting extra effort in trying to really develop these new therapies is something that made a huge difference here. I mean, we can open clinical trials based on knowledge that we get from the lab. So we test in vitro, in the incubator, animal models, and those concepts in the cellular therapy field, it's, it's quite fast to go into the clinic. I mean, for drugs against the cancer, it takes many, many years. From the, from the first concept to the first patient being treated. We could get a concept here from the lab to the clinic in three years. We already have a clinical trial, so that's very fast. And we have a nice core facilities and also services inside the Center for Immunotherapy to do that. So while the technical challenges of CAR T-cell therapies are being worked out and the biological challenges are being studied, the future of this unique approach to fighting cancer looks promising. In our next segment, we will look at where key opinion leaders in the immunotherapy space think the field is heading.